Hey everybody, it's Ryan Greenberg from Nemsum Spotlight here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Really excited to be with Brooke from Gold Cross Ambulance and uh, learning a little bit more about a system that has some age on it. So tell us a little bit about Gold Cross and some of the history and what we're standing in front of. So Gold Cross Ambulance was established in 1968 by Gene Moffitt, and he had these two, well, this is one of the original two Cadillac ambulances that he uh, would go on calls from his home. His wife would answer the phone in their house to take the calls, and they would provide ambulance service. And they built this company um, into a fleet of now about 98 ambulances. Uh, we have five different divisions all over the state of Utah, so southern Utah, eastern Utah, and the Wasatch Front um, provide 911 and interfacility transport, as well as specialty transport like bariatric, neonatal transport, and with about 50,000 calls a year and um, around 370 employee, uh, field providers. So. It's that is awesome. Grown a little bit from two ambulances out of the house. So what's one thing that you're most proud of within the agency, within Gold Cross, and, and some of the work that you've done, some of your accomplishments? We've worked really hard over the last three years to uh, build our quality department and, and really have performance improvement be a focus. And so I'm really proud of our field care providers because they've embraced that, that focus. And really work to improve our system. We've received several awards over the last year or two, um, looking at our STEMI care, uh, Mission Lifeline recognition, some awards for pediatric vital sign collection improvement, and um, also a documentation project improvement. So everyone has really embraced that culture of change and performance improvement, and I'm really proud of that here at Gold Cross. Wow, and congratulations on both the nationals, some national awards you've won, state and regional, so congrats on that. So what do you think is some of the magic that makes your leadership team work so well together? Communication is a huge part of it. I think that's really the magic. And not having the silos of different departments that don't collaborate with each other. We have a, a bi-weekly committee that has members from the billing department, the quality department, the training department, operations, and we all get together and just look at ways that we can improve, things that we can do better, we talk about what's going on, and having all those people together really makes the difference in, in, um, in being able to talk to each other and being able to drive change in our organization. That's terrific. And what would you say to a new leader, to, to someone out there, some of our members or, or people watching that's aspiring to be a new leader? What encouragement or what words would you say, hey, here's, a, here's some advice I have for you to, to proceed along your way and to, and to become a successful leader? I think the biggest piece of advice I can give is to have very clear expectations. Um, and, and make those clear to everyone in the organization. So, for example, we were having some trouble with documentation and getting documentation in the right places in our electronic health report. So we made a guideline that told basically every box of documentation and what we wanted to see in it. Um, we put that guideline out to our field providers. We did education on it, and then we scored the documentation so we can measure it and see the improvement that happened with it. And we, we watched a significant improvement from like 74% when we started the project to now like 96% on average company-wide. So it really made a difference to have everyone know those expectations, communicate them well, measure them, and watch the improvement happen. And I think you can really gear that to any area of your operation. You know, collect data, measure it, um, educate about it, and you'll see improvement in all different areas of your organization. Terrific. Awesome. And so just on the last part, kind of what would you say, and you're really excited to have you on the board, one of our newer board members uh, came from the merger of NEMSMA and the Quality Assurance Association. And so what's some advice you would give to either a person who's thinking of signing up for NEMSMA or even a person who already is a member who wants to get engaged more what would you tell them? I would say be engaged. Don't just fill out your application and send it in and read the newsletter every month. You know, participate in the polls. Find a committee that interests you. If there isn't a committee that interests you, propose one. 
and get involved, get to know the other members. I think that's, that's the best way to get the most out of this program is the networking, the collaboration that you can do. So, so find something you're interested in and dive right in and participate with us because we would love to have you. That's awesome. Some great advice. Well, I really appreciate you, appreciate you having us today. And uh, from Salt Lake City, Utah, hopefully we'll see you next time. Have a good one, everyone. Till the next NEMSMA Spotlight. Thank you.